The Spark traveled to the Ned Smith Center's annual Nature and Art Festival and spoke to Shane Phillips from the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture about Lucky, the spotted lanternfly detecting dog. The spotted lanternfly is an invasive insect native to Asia that is just everywhere in Pennsylvania. That's even though it was discovered just nine years ago in Berks County. Spotted lanternfly feeds on sap from a myriad of plants, but has a strong preference for plants important to Pennsylvania's economy, including grapevines, maples, black walnut, birch, and willow. Their feeding damages and stresses plants, which can decrease their health and in some cases cause death of those plants. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture gave some unusual instructions to Pennsylvanians who see spotted lanternflies. We were told to smash them, kill them, on site. Now, when have you heard that from a government agency? The Ag Department has a weapon, though. Lucky the lanternfly sniffing dog. Shane Phillips is the compliance and enforcement specialist with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, and is he is here with Lucky Shane Phillips. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Well, I saw a presentation that you did earlier today, and it's not just Lucky who is the star. It is a whole education about the spotted lanternfly. I mean, this is a pest. I don't even think my introduction did it justice as far as what a problem the spotted lanternfly is. Absolutely, yeah. We've we've been dealing with this thing for almost nine years now, and um, and we hear a lot of folks uh, this year saying that they're not seeing them. Where are they? Um, you know, I, I can't really answer that. I, I would love to say that that's a trend, but... You know, I haven't seen as many, we, although right after your demonstration earlier, we saw two nymphs. Are they in the nymph stage? I mean, what's the life cycle of a spotted lanternfly? Well, you know, it depends on where you're at this time of year. So there could be third instar nymphs, which are just the black and white ones. Fourth instar nymphs, which are the red ones with white spots. That's what we they're, saw here. Or uh, some places they're adults already. So the ones with wings that everybody is probably most familiar with. Mm. What kind of damage do they cause? They feed on the, the sap of the plants that they're, they're feeding on. And um, we're especially concerned with the grape industry. So, so they will get on the grape vines at vineyards. And they do two things, really. They're, they're taking the sap from the grapes. So the, the sugary sap that's going to those grapes is taken away. So they can't become as sweet, right? But they're also um, kind of leaving excrement on those grapes as they're feeding. So it's going in one end and out the other. So we can't sell grapes that have bug excrement on them, right? And then they're also not as sweet because they're they're taking the sap out of the vines before yeah, they reach the grapes. I don't think bug excrement would help the wine industry <laughs> a whole lot. Probably not. All right. So, you know, as I said, the Ag Department advised Pennsylvanians to smash them when they saw them. But you have other weapons against them, and Lucky is one of those weapons. Now, Lucky has been with you for, what, the last four years? Uh, it'll be three years in September. Oh, okay, three years in September. So tell me about Lucky. Uh, Lucky is a four-year-old German Shepherd. Um, she was trained at the Penn Vet Working Dog Center over in Philadelphia. Uh, they do a lot of uh, law enforcement and search and rescue type of dogs. Uh, they had done a uh, proof of concept. They did a research project back in 2019 to see if dogs could detect spotted lanternfly eggs. Um, and as soon as I heard about that, I, you know, I met to my boss and said, hey, can we please get one of those if they're successful, right? So um, the next year we, we were uh, approved and, and we got lucky from them. Um, and I went over uh, for a couple of months and trained how to work with her. Um, she had already kind of had all the training that she needed to be a detector dog prior to us saying that we were interested in her. Um, she did go through their law enforcement program, so she, she was kind of in training to be a police dog. Um, but we purchased her before the, the kind of final steps of, of the bitey work that they do over there. So, so she, you know, that worked out perfectly for us, something we're not really interested in apprehending criminals. So she already knew how to uh, detect General odors, they, they use a, a thing called UDC, which is not, uh, it doesn't exist in nature. So they use that to train their dogs 
how to detect odor and play the game, so to speak, hunt for things. And then um, we said, yeah, we want her to do spotted lanternfly eggs. So at that point, I came in and, and was trained with her. Um, it's fairly simple to imprint them once they know how to, to play that game. Um, and and before too long, we were out looking for, for lanternfly eggs. So she was trained for, for lanternflies, but for what? I mean, a lot of people are like, okay, well, I can see a lot of lanternflies outside. What is, why do you need a dog that can detect the eggs, detect lanternflies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of folks, when, when I meet them, they automatically think that we're out in a, a wooded setting or something like that. We're looking at trees for the eggs, and that's that's not the case with her at all. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a compliance and enforcement specialist. Um, I work with businesses who are required to have a permit. Um, anybody that's moving things around within our quarantine or especially moving things from our quarantine to other non-quarantined areas is required to have a uh, permit training. It's a free training that Penn State did together with us. Um, doesn't take too long and it basically teaches employees what to look for as far as spotted lanternfly goes. So um, it basically it just means there's a whole lot of extra eyes out there looking for spotted lanternflies because um, the primary way that they move around is, is hitchhiking, right? So they either get on products or vehicles themselves or they lay their eggs on products or vehicles and then those things move to new areas. That's the main way they get around. Um, so once a company has a permit, they are supposed to be inspecting their goods and vehicles. Uh, and if they find any spotted lanternflies or eggs on those things, they're supposed to destroy them and keep records that they've done so, right? So we go to those permitted businesses, and um, Lucky's basically a supplement to the inspections that we're asking them to do. She can smell eggs in places that you and I can't really see very well. So we'll go in and, and look at s smell stuff that has already been inspected by them and see if we find anything that they might have missed. Um, and it's, a, it's an opportunity to let them know if we do find something, hey, come take a look at this. This is where we found it. This is somewhere that you might want to look a little harder in the future. So, You, during your demonstration, went to the parking lot here, uh, the festival parking lot, and there are a lot of cars here. Did she find anything? Um, just the thing that I put out there for. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, earlier, as I said, we had a couple of nymphs right over to your left. We smashed them, so... The, the dead one, she would she doesn't smell? Well, she's not trained on the the, the bugs themselves. The nymphs and the adults, uh, she ignores. Oh, okay. Um, we considered training her to detect those as well, but since they move, that complicates things. Yeah. Um, you know, they could leave, a, leave an odor where they were and then be gone. So I don't want to confuse her. You know, if she were looking for bugs and there was one on this table and she told me she smelled it, but it, I don't see it. Well, she's not wrong for telling me she smells it, but I can't see it's there. So, so that could complicate. How does she tell you she uh, smells something? Uh, she's got what we call a passive alert. So she just puts her nose as close to the source as she thinks it is and stays there. And she just waits there until I give her her ball. Mm -hmm. She is a little, I don't want to say jumpy, but uh, she has a lot of energy. Yes, and she absolutely. lives with you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, she has this ball with her that uh, she's been playing with constantly all day. So, uh, I mean, obviously she's a good dog, but she has the, she has a vest that you put on her. You said that uh, uh, when she puts that vest on, that she knows she's going to work, and yes. she she gets kind of heightened sense at that point. Absolutely, yeah. She's got a few different vests for different jobs that she does, um, but she is you know generally working dogs are are a little more um energetic you know they have like you said right now she's she's pushing me to play with her ball mm -hmm. um that's kind of how they are they're not always the best pets but uh lucky for me 
<laughs> I often say I'm the lucky one, right? Um, <laughs> she has a really good off switch. So these types of settings, she she's definitely kind of on edge with all the people around, and it's hot, and, and she thinks it's time to work and all that. But um, at home, she's she's a really good dog. She she turns it off. She lays around. I've got a six-year-old and a nine-month-old, and then they're best buddies. Mm. And I should have mentioned earlier that... She's the first one, right? Trained for Spotted Lantern Fan. We only have a minute left, I should warn you, right? Well, that went quick, yeah. yeah. Um, there are a few other groups that have gotten some Spotted Lantern Fly dogs. Um, there was a group up in New York that was kind of training their dogs around the same time we got her. But, yeah, that's kind of what we say. Shane Phillips is a compliance and enforcement specialist with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, along with Lucky. And uh, I encourage you to go to our website, WITF.org, to see some photographs of uh, Lucky as well. But, Shane, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much, sir. You're listening to The Spark on WITF, your home for NPR, discovering all things local. I'm Scott Lamar. For more from Mosaic, please like and subscribe to the channel or check out another video. To help support this project, please visit witf.org mosaic.